we've always tried to take the negative and turn it to positive. So, you know, we look at our mom and just, I mean, she's the ideal epitome of what a warrior is. Her story is what keeps our family going and alive and, and keeping it positive. This guy looks at me and goes, what is that? Look at your arm. And the blood was just coming down my arm. And I just, I looked and I was like, well, that, that's not normal. And then all of a sudden, people started pushing us down on top of each other. Once we were on the ground, we looked over at my mom and she was the only one just laying completely still. And that's when Don, he's a retired firefighter from California, came crawling over to us and he had said, you know, I can help you. Like, and so then we flipped her over and then that's where we saw she was bleeding from her upper right chest. Her skin color was turning white. Her eyes were glazed over and she's just looking up. He told us, if you want to live, you got to leave. So that was really hard to hear that and then leave her and not know. At that point, 22,000 people running all down the strip, yelling active shooter, and it was like a scene from a movie. And then shortly after that, you know, when she said there was a shooting in front, that's how I found out. And all she could say is, Daddy, I'm sorry, Daddy, I'm sorry. I knew what she meant was it was a Mother's Day gift for her mom. Don said after 30 minutes had passed and he could still communicate to her, he had a feeling that she was gonna live. And then finally I got a, I got a call. Somebody said, Paige, your mom is at sunrise. I mean, the reunion itself was a miracle. We were all just so happy that we found out she was alive. I remember parking and, and walking up to the uh, emergency room doors. There was literally a pretty large trail of blood. I mean, I've never been to war, but it seemed like a war zone to me. She laid on the, on the lawn for over an hour before she got medical, like actual medical attention. When I saw Rosemary, I saw the real damage of what the, what the bullet had done. I knew from that point on she was going to have a very difficult time healing from all these injuries. It's been a long road. There are definitely days that are better than other days. When the doctors finally said after a couple weeks she's going to make it, I think that was just a relief for everyone. Her first conversation to me was when she woke up, she said she remembers rising above her body, looking down at her body in the grass. And then the next thing she said, she went to heaven. And she saw her dad. And she saw her two brothers. And all of them basically were saying how peaceful it was, but they also told her that it wasn't her time and you needed to go back. And it's not a day I thank God that he didn't take her. Out of the last nine months, I, there was only five weeks that I spent at home. When she was able to come home, well, we're supposed to go see you at your office. And he says, I'm not gonna have her come and you know, see me at the office, I'll come to you. It's unheard of, you know, here if any doctor is making house calls anymore, especially surgeons. He even gave me his cell phone number, and any time that I would text him, he would take the time and text me back right away. I just want to get her through this and home and feeling normally, because it's been such a long year. To be honest, with all the hospitals around, I was thrilled that she ended up here, because I knew she'd be in good hands. I mean, Sunrise did an incredible job. Incredible job. When we found out, you know, who the who the guy was you know, that uh, was the shooter, people said, you know, how do you deal with something like that? You know, for as tragic and for as senseless as it was, you know, we have to forgive, and that's what we've done, and that's how we've survived this. Well, I knew she was strong and stubborn, <laughs> but I didn't know how strong and stubborn she was. <laughs> It gives me a really great feeling to be able to help her and to, to, to care for her. I mean, she's my hero. She's my rock. So my sister and I decided to open our own sister dance studio, um, but it wasn't just us as sisters. It was a whole family affair. Um, my mom greeted every single person that came in the door. During the five weeks that my mom was able to be home, she came in and surprised the kids and then just <laughs> the tears from everybody. And that just goes to show how, how much my mom has impacted, you know, those kids and those families as well. We're excited to get her back. Yeah, we've always had a very tight-knit family. It shows even more, I mean, anything that anyone needs, they're right there. I see my mom and I think that 
is Vegas Strong. Before Vegas Strong was even a thing, I think it was a thing at the scene. It didn't matter who you were, if someone could help you, they were gonna help you. There's a lot of nice people here. A lot of people that would just give their shirt off their back to help somebody else. I've seen it for over 30 years. One man's action isn't gonna bring Vegas down. There are good, good people that live in Las Vegas. We may be Vegas strong, but as a family, we're Melanson strong.